Thank you for watching this video. In this channel, you and I will be reviewing different cars and learn at the same time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider joining us. If you are a subscriber, please click the like button. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Ju from Soju Cars and I'm going to be, well, I'm already test driving the F-150 Lariat. Now this variant costs 2,698,000 pesos SRP. Wow, wow, wow. This is such a huge, huge pickup truck. Thank you. Please pray. Ang laki to. This is my first time doing the test drive, obviously, but this is not my first time driving. As of now, we have safely entered the road. For now, the steering is really, really soft. We call this the manibella, right? The feeling is good. It's soft. And the braking, I'm going over the hump. We're going to test the speed bumps there. There are like two of them. We're driving at 20 kilometers per hour now. Okay, for this one, we will go very slowly. Okay, here's the bump. One, boom. Two, boom. <laughs> okay, and then after this, I'm gonna go a bit faster. But there's a guy in front. As you know, this uh, Lariat variant or the F-150 doesn't come with sport suspension. What's good about that is this is a pickup truck and uh, you can have more load compared to having a cold spring suspension. People will talk about the wild track uh, versus the Raptor or you know. They will always tell you that the trucks with the lift springs can have more load. This one can say, yeah, it also comes in leaf spring, but they tune the leaf spring, mm -hmm. so it's a little, it's, it's softer, and uh, it's not as, it doesn't have the best payload capacity as the Ranger, mm -hmm. but uh, I think that this one is not meant to be loaded that heavy. Uh -huh. Just like but, a Raptor, something uh, uh, like but that. But you can pull. So what you're saying is, loading capacity may be not as good as the wild truck or Ranger, but yes. The pulling capacity is way, way better. Way, way this better. Is meant that, this is meant to pull trailers. Uh -huh. This is meant to pull trailers for your jet ski. Oh be, my. be it one or two or even a small uh, boat. Of course, we're driving around uh, the city and the road condition is, of course, paved very well, very nicely. We're going a, a bit outside our supposed boundary. Let me try to press the camera button and see what happens. For your safety, some features have been disabled. We have blind spot warning. The side mirrors are really huge and the uh, visibility is really, really nice. And of course, we have huge uh, A-pillars, but it's also not a problem because uh, it's far away there. Normally, the A-pillar is somewhere here and it will block your visibility. I'm on McKinley Road where it's supposedly the one of the best roads. <laughs> But it's not. And the road is very bumpy. This is not yet the bumpiest road. We will still get to the bumpiest road soon. And let's see how it feels. The stock suspension of FJ is really, really comfortable. And uh, I had no problem with that. But my dailies are like uh, Fortuner and the FJ. Sometimes the H100. Uh, sometimes the Terra. We need to pamper the Terra. <laughs> so far, like Fortuner, for me, uh, for me, the Fortuner really doesn't have good suspension. <laughs> but it has good engine and fuel economy wise, really good. And I'm supposed to be explaining about this Lariat experience, why I'm explaining about other things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the truck is very wide and this McKinley Road is really, really narrow. It feels like I'm driving a bus and <laughs> I'm a bit afraid like to stand next to the other vehicle in this very narrow two lane. That's the truth. We are here in Das Marinas near San Antonio Church. I'm a, like a super horn guy, not a horny guy, horn guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a very narrow uh, road and I just turned on the camera for the 360 view. Because we're going in a slow speed, we can still monitor uh, what's around us. And as soon as we reach 10 km per hour, it turns off. This is a huge, huge truck. But when you have the 360 camera, you have that confidence to actually move around. The steering, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, we have the driving modes, no? Okay, what kind of driving mode are we at right now? When I press it, you see normal mode. Okay, I, I'm going to be moving. Toe hole, 
for towing, snow and wet, echo, and sport. Okay, let's try the sport. Okay, I placed it on sport, and now there's an S. There's an orange S right beside the M, which is the manual for the shifting. <laughs> so now I'm going to try the normal. Okay, this is normal. Wow. You know, honestly, uh, <laughs> it's so fast and normal. Uh -uh. You don't need to put it on sport. <laughs> I don't think you have. Because, like, for tuner, there's a big difference from echo and power. Okay. And honestly, I just put it in normal. Because normal is already fast enough for me. <laughs> but this car, I don't really see the big difference between the normal and the turbo. Uh -huh. There must be. But speed wise, <laughs> the torque is boom. Yeah. So, what kind of an engine is it? 3.5? This one is equipped with a 3.5 liter uh, V6 twin turbo gasoline engine. Yeah. Actually, I really don't know that much about turbo. So, I never knew you can have turbo in gasoline engines. Turbo is uh, most of the time it's installed on diesel engines because the diesel engines lack in horsepower and okay, torque yes. so they put a turbocharger mm -hmm. for, so the, the performance of those cars with diesel engines would be better uh -huh. so with the technology right now I think Ford is one of the first manufacturers to put a turbocharger on, on their it. gasoline engines uh -huh. thus the EcoBoost was launched mm. so can you tell me a bit more about EcoBoost engine what, what is it so different uh, because there are like same Ranger, but some of them are EcoBoost. Like Eco, Eco Sport also. The top variant Titanium is EcoBoost, yes. but the lower variants are not. Yes. Um, Ford, uh, when Ford launched the EcoBoost engine, uh, they launched a tagline, more power, less yes. fuel. Well. Uh, so what Ford did was, uh, if they can, uh, they were able to lower the displacement of the engine and probably uh, make it really smaller but you are not sacrificing the power output mm. that's why when uh, uh, when the Ford Fiesta was launched way way back wow, Fiesta. <laughs> people, people were surprised that the 1.0 liter 3 cylinder engine with turbocharger has more power output than our 1.5 liter 4 cylinder engine so it gives you the power and the uh, uh, fun driving experience that you need and at the same time you're saving on fuel imagine you only have a one liter displacement you only have a three cylinder engine meaning the engine is lighter okay smaller on mass mm -hmm. so the total weight of the vehicle is, is affected mm -hmm. meaning you're saving on fuel uh, imagine oh uh, let's like you're stuck in traffic, you're stuck in Binondo traffic mm -hmm. then uh, if you're using a, an EcoBoost engine, let's say a 1 liter 3 cylinder one, versus a car beside you that has let's say a 1.6 liter 4 cylinder engine that car consumes more fuel mm -hmm. without giving you the distance and the power so that's what uh, Ford is doing and if, as you would know, Ford is well known for V8 engines. Mm. So when uh, Ford Triton, right? Triton. Is it what is that? Yeah, so those the, those are the uh, the 4.6 right? and 5.4 Triton V8s. Those are V8s, right? Yes. Yeah. See, I have a bit of those yeah. knowledge. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when when they launched the EcoBoost engine on the Expeditions, the power output of those engines are better than the V8 engines that we had and at the same time you're you're more fuel efficient so I mean gone are the days that the people would think that oh though your expeditions uh it's uh, a lot a of lot fuel of uh, it's a lot of gas because it's a V8 no yeah. it's not mm. since 2015 we're putting EcoBoost engines or V6 engines on our expeditions and our customers who are used to have V8s are mm. happy because uh they have less they have less fuel consumption Assumption. but the driving experience and the power output is at least the same if not better oh. by the way guys i'm with mr jericho from ford global city 
and he's the legend. He's been with the brand for 20 years. Oh All right, 20 years and still counting. So if you have your concerns with Ford, you have questions. I mean, there are many salespeople, but you cannot ignore the experience. Thanks. Okay, Thanks. you cannot ignore that. So if you're really serious about buying something, if you're really serious about your car, you need to discuss with the professional. And I present to you, of course, Mr. Jericho. <laughs> we are driving around market market right now. Actually, well, as we were talking, I switched to Echo. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think happened? I don't see the difference. Echo is still fast. Normal is fast. Sport is fast. I think to make this car slow, it's either tow howl or snow. I think so. We are going to a road where there are less cars so that we can actually try to floor it. But what I noticed is that you cannot shift from neutral to drive without pressing the button. The Fortuner, you can do it without pressing. It's just something I noticed. About the comfort, the uh, suspension. I think my car is more com comfortable. Considering the size of this truck, it has 20 inch wheels. Wow. Okay, I'm in sport mode. I, now I feel the difference. And the sound of the engine. <laughs> I don't know if the sound is coming from the engine or if the sound is coming from the muffler. But you know, the cabin is very quiet. But when I floor it, wow. As you know, this is a bike turbo. So you have two turbos. The first turbo is for the low RPM. The second turbo is the higher RPM. The more the better. But maybe later on you have three turbos. But uh, as for now, two is enough. Shout out to Miss Fiel, Sir Harvey, Sir Wyatt. Of course, my wife. I'm not even sure I'm going to use this. <laughs> Whoa, the sound! <laughs> the sound! When you floor it, there's a... It's not the, you know, like a motorbike sound. It's a, like a thick, muffled sound, but it's really nice. Uh, what I also noticed is that there's also another screen on the tachometer. Get the brakes, put it on drive. Okay, drive. There we oh! go. Oh! <laughs> There's actually another LCD there. So we know that this car has a, like sport mode or shiftronic or manual mode. Select shift. When you press any of the buttons, three, two, one, go. Ten speeds. Oh, oh. You can reduce it to six speed if you want. You'll set its limit. You'll like if you're climbing somewhere, uh -huh. you want to have higher RPM. Yes, so you can ah. select if, let's say, if you only want to shift yes. up to a certain gear. Let's ah. say you, you want this car to limit itself up to its sixth gear. You can do that. Yeah, because like in other cars, you will see like three, two, one. Imagine that. That adds to the fuel economy. Steering wheel feel, I said it's very soft. Now, we're going to try yeah. the parallel parking. Yeah. I just pressed this one, the nah. active pa yeah. park assist. It says here, release steering wheel. Yes, I released it. Okay. The shift to reverse. Okay. And then, let go. Let back let up, stop. prepare to stop. Let go. Uh, let go. Of the brakes a little. Okay. And stop. As you, at least you're controlling it. Okay. Oh! oh! Is it going to go? Is it going up? Oh, it yeah, stopped. That's why that's we're going to hit the curb. That's why we need to find a space. Then ah. Let's find two cars. So this time we are parked and we want to discuss some things. The only thing that might be uh, difficult would be if you're coming from a small vehicle. It's really not the visibility. I guess it's uh, you really need to put in your mind how big this car is so you cannot drive the same like when you see that parking spot you think you can go in there but honestly this one you might have a bit of difficulty even though you have second the side mirrors they're huge and the one on the left is heated and you also have blind spot warning they're not vertical they're not horizontal they are like a more of a square so you can see like everything it's like i'm looking in a, a an ipad or something so side mirror there's no problem they're auto folding they're power adjusted we have some lights here you can turn on the lights on the left and the right of the side mirrors so when i press the button there's the light and also when i put the turn signal look what happens there you have the turn signal there and the white led light there but let's see what happens if i turn off the light 
see so there are separate lights these are white lights and these are this is the yellow light the car is very tall so when you drive around when you see cars in front you can see over their roof meaning you can also see what's on their roof you can also see what's in front of them which is very good the throttle response there were plenty of modes of course five modes normal towing snow and wet echo and sport i tried shifting from normal to echo echo to turbo you know the sport mode really had the uh, more responsiveness even in echo and normal there was no problem cabin noise so quiet so peaceful even you're driving we have all season tires for this uh, lariat variant in 20 inches you don't hear any of course you don't hear any tire noise uh, what i'm guessing is that if you like maybe go to 17 inches and then you have thicker tires Maybe you'll have better ride quality. I, I'm just guessing that because when you have 20s and then you have thinner tires, um, the tendency is that you have, uh, you sacrifice the comfort. That's just me. So what's the meaning of a lariat? Lariat is like a rope, like a lasso. Mr. Jericho will tell us more about the lariat. Well, the F-150 lariat was launched way, way back late 90s, like when Ford came back to the Philippines. Uh, back then, there were only three variants. The 4x2 style side, mm. the 4x2 flare side, and the 4x4 Lariat. Meaning, the Lariat is the highest variant for the F-150 back then. Uh, but now, we have something higher than Lariat, which is? I think King Ranch, oh. the Limited, oh. <laughs> and the Raptor variant. I didn't know about those things. I didn't know he's going to say those things. The Twin Turbo works very well like a charm braking uh, unlike the raptor you can check out the video of uh, riding in tandem uh, they talk about the braking system that it's deep and then you need to go like almost halfway until you can feel the brake calipers actually clipping on the disc brakes but this one it breaks right away this one also has four ventilated disc brakes i just did a u-turn there u-turn could be a problem if you are in a really narrow place shifting i don't feel anything when the gears are shifting i just feel the shifting on my head but the gears oh uh, no there's no shifting and this is they're famous for that you know they have 10 gears no this truck definitely has the interior of uh it's very similar with expedition but uh well if i say that it has a feeling of a car uh well the interior is definitely not a feeling of a car it's a truck okay it's a nice luxury truck but when i talk about the torque the throttle the ride quality the steering response maybe it can be a car so when you drive a big truck like this you feel safe and secure i feel confident i would feel confident even though like there's flooding like i'm stuck in a mountain i think i can escape from there even though this is a four by two I think this car still has the ability to get out and it also boosts confidence just looking at the front fascia of this truck just looking at the those uh, quad LED headlamps they make a big statement <laughs> big 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 statement and also when you see there the body the cladding at the back it makes a big statement even now we're just parked here so many people are like oh what's that mm -hmm. You know, many are like, hey, what's that? I feel like I'm not in an ordinary vehicle. Okay, humps. Okay, we tried going over some humps earlier. Uh, it's not the most comfortable, it's not the most soft experience, but Ford is built for tough, okay? If you're a lady and you drive this car, of course, it will look really, really cool. Now, we're going to find a spot where we can try the park assist. We're in sport mode now. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a V6. <laughs> diba? Yes. Six Look years. at his lips. <laughs> you should read his lips. He said F-150. Go yeah. another round. <laughs> wow. Diba? What I, you know, what I feel is like lots of horses like <laughs> they're galloping. But it's not that heavy that there's a little bit of delay then biglang Boom. magbubu siya. Yes. Because that's sometimes the weight factor comes into play. This one is light. Kaya if you step on it, it moves right away, but it's not doesn't jump that much. Wow! This but is... the power that you need is there. <laughs> oh my god, that is so fast! Are you driving a truck? No. Oh, 
Wow, this car is really really fast. All right, but if you do that, of course, it will have more fuel consumption. Yeah, because for both sure. In. But on traffic, it's still a six cylinder, mm. and, and an eight cylinder car stuck in traffic wastes more fuel. Wow, the steering! Wow, super soft. Oh. We're in eco mode. Ah, eco mode. Yeah. So yeah, it okay. shifts. It shifts right away. Yes. It and doesn't drive a lot. So you can change it uh, on the go. When I went from eco to sport. First, the sound changes. Every time I press the throttle, oh, the accelerator really kicks in right away. <laughs> Actually, the car is very wide. <laughs> I have to be careful. Like, uh, let's say if I am in C5. Hala, there are lots of small cars and mm. motorbikes. Oh, so you can shift from neutral to drive. I mean, without pressing, but you cannot shift from, from drive. drive to neutral. Yes. The air condition system is superb, by the way. My comment for the pricing, it's just as expected. I wonder if you guys ever uh, visited the McDonald's there on the... Yes, fifth. I did. The drive through is really, really massacre. Yeah. So I don't think uh, this truck can go there. It won't. I don't think this truck will fit in there. You will hit something. Okay, now I think I'm gonna get a cup of coffee. So we're going to try the drive through of Starbucks. That one is okay. I think the sure. you know, drive through of Starbucks is okay. Sure. Let's try. Another head turner. Look, it's taking a picture. Oh, really? Is he taking a picture of this, this one? Yeah. So it's a good advertisement also to drive around. Yeah. The brake is also amazing. I mean, it can support the weight. Yeah, it has a very nice acceleration, and, uh, but the braking is also amazing. Now we're trying to test if our truck would fit in, in the, the drive-thru. And look Starbucks. at that Hilux. Oh, look at that Hilux. Yes. Okay, we're in Starbucks, and there's an Explorer. Then there's the Prado, and there's a motorbike. Let's see if this truck can fit. Turn them back once. Okay. Let's go. Turn. Kayaba. Okay, we turn on the. Oh, it's, it turned yeah, it, on. it on. Okay. And then it will hit, no? Uh, will it hit? I think Zero. it won't. Do you think it will not hit, no? I think it won't. But it's better to be safe. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is scary. Okay, back to drive. And the. 360 degree camera is working and I'm about to order something in Starbucks. Am I going to order here? So this car has speed sensing door lock. We're beside the XLT and the size is <laughs> very taller. And we can also floor it. Since there's no one here. We're just going 20! Just 20. You can check the turning ranges of this one. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the backup camera, the resolution is not bad, and then it's very responsive. And the 360 degree camera is also very responsive, and the stitching is also uh, kind of seamless. Of course, you have other cars now with 3D options, which is. Of course much better but maybe in the next generation or the more expensive variants it would be nice to see an f-150 on the screen like on a 3d view perspective we just turn on the parallel parking and then just go forward just go forward it's, we're still searching for a space now there's a car in front it's a camry and then still searching still searching okay space found okay. please drive forward Wait. Stop vehicle. Release okay, the steering wheel. Put, put the reverse. reverse. Put the reverse. There's none. Okay. Release the, release Just the release the uh, release the brake. Okay, the steering wheel is moving, and then there's a guy actually with the door open. And oh my goodness! Oh, it's it's, it's actually I need to like uh, use the brake to adjust. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Are we not going to hit something? We won't. Are you sure? We won't. Well, I can feel it's going to hit something. We won't. Oh my goodness. We won't. Whoa. We won't. <laughs> Whoa. Apply the brakes. Put into drive. Look what happened. Look what's going to happen. Put it on drive. Okay. 
Oh. Let go of the brakes. A little. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. Finished. <laughs> Look at the gap. Scary at first. Oh, the seats at least in front are really comfortable and you know the bench type of seats at the back are super soft and you cannot just call them seats, they're like couch. couch and bed. One person can also sleep on the floor because uh, there's no tunnel at the middle. This is a house. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Now I'm together with Mr. Jericho, the legend, 20 years in Ford. Please go to Ford Global City and look for no other but Mr. Jericho. Now if you have more questions, you can also put them in the comment section below and probably maybe we can do a quick uh, Q&A session with him. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye! As I end this uh, shoot, uh, I want to comment on the angle of the door uh, opening. It opens here. That's the first angle, which is quite wide. So if you had a car beside it, you know, these cars are very wide, wide vehicle. And let's say if you're there, let me show you what I mean. If you open it, and then if, if you're, I'm just going to put my hand there. If you open it for the step one, it will already touch. So you really, really need to be careful or somebody should come down and do what I'm doing. Like open the doors for them so that you will not damage the other car. Like this one. So the first step, the first step is here. That's okay, but if there was a car here, it might hit. So just for peace of mind, park somewhere without cars next to you. Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you everybody. May your dreams come true.